Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of Fatima Parish. Today, we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today's gospel reminds us that Jesus dwells within us, and the Holy Spirit is with us also. Therefore, when we look around, we can see the full flowering of the divine in ourselves, in each other, and in the whole world. Truly, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Our presider for this Mass is Father Simon. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Today, once again, we thank God for giving us the opportunity as his children to offer this sacrifice, which is our due, the relationship between God and his children. He loves us, he's our God, but that sacrifice, which is, is his exclusive right, and due on our side is given to him. And so we pray that as we offer this Mass, God may be honored, God may be glorified, and he will bless us in his faithfulness. To prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and my wants, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed my virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, May he forgive us the sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamp of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to mighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that we may relieve in remembrance and that what we relieve in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people 
and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in the city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. All the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God, who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for, for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, 
because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them, is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter, and from the text we have, we hear the Holy Spirit We mentioned <clears throat> in all the texts to help us know that at this point we are building up for the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit, that's Pentecost which will soon celebrate. And today the church begins to prepare us to know the role, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit in guiding, directing, and helping us express our Christian faith, our calling in Christ. And so the text we have today we are encouraged, we, you know, it's kind of a guide on how to prepare ourselves to receive the Holy Spirit. Even though we know we receive the Holy Spirit because after baptism, like uh, the first reading says, that when the, the first reading says, um, The first reading says, the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God. Yes, they accepted, they were baptized, but had not received the Holy Spirit. You know, that's why when we are baptized, we are also confirmed. And confirmation is to call the Holy Spirit upon us. So he can begin to guide us. Because this is a church which... We are not called to come and express our love, our faith in God on our own. That is, without the aid of the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is there to direct us. That is why you notice that great works, sacrifices, a lot of things have been done in the church from generation to generation without even pay. People give themselves, people give their lives, they do any, everything for love. They are not forced to do it. They are not a kind of a, um, intimidated in any way to do it. But we notice that the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of their suffering, continue to bring that consolation within the heart, within the soul. You know, sometimes even in persecution, you find those working for Jesus, those who profess Jesus. You discover they are renewed. You know, they are strengthened. Like now, our world seems to be down. It seems to be crippled. But the truth is, not those who open themselves to the direction and the support of the Holy Spirit. For those people who open themselves to the direction and work of the Holy Spirit, they know that God is at work. At the moment, this is what we have, and at whatever we see, we just pray and look up to our God. And he continues to help us. That is why, yes, a lot of people may feel frustrated. A lot of people may feel like committing all kinds of maybe things, but those who are renewed 
and strengthened by the Holy Spirit. He continued to minister to them in their souls. He continued to throw light, even in this situation, so that they will see. So as far as they are concerned, at the moment this is what is before us, God is also before us. And so we continue to carry on in faith. And so we are made to know uh, that we really need to prepare once again to a kind of um, um, renew our devotion, renew our attention, renew our desire, renew, you know, our hope of the renewing character of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Because it's very important to make us find joy. Because without the Holy Spirit, our faith will be boring. Without the Holy Spirit, even to pray, it will be difficult. Because as you pray and what you pray for, because you'll be poorly informed about prayer. And so you pray with a wrong mindset. And so when what we expect, even though we do not first of all know that we need to surrender to God and pray as children and people of God, sometimes when we do that, and we seem not to be answered. We lose heart and walk away. But that's not the case with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus puts it clearly in the gospel uh, in helping us, you know, to prepare the Holy Spirit. He says, if you love me, it begins with the love of Christ. The love of Christ is very important. That second reading, in fact, I'll begin the second reading says, sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. That's a good way to prepare. Because the Holy Spirit is a peculiar spirit. That the Bible, what the Bible says, it's a, it's a spirit that the world cannot receive. Yes, but you will receive. So, because what happened, you sanctify Christ as Lord. That is, confirm, at least, we have certain right of our own to determine what rule our heart, to determine the principle that will influence everything we do. And so, here they are saying, let Jesus be that principle. Be that guide, that, that, be that, um, that reason in which we do things. So sanctify, that is, confirm Christ as Lord. Nobody can force you to do it. You yourself can do it. You yourself may have to cooperate, you know, with God. You yourself may have to really, you know, tell your heart that, Jesus is the Lord. It's just that what we go through. Whatever happens, Jesus is the Lord. And as long as we know Jesus is the Lord, it's fine. We continue to give praise as long as we live is Christ. And even if we die, we know it's gain. That is to confirm Christ in our heart. That is plant Jesus. Give him an unshakable kind of place, prominence. In your heart to help the Holy Spirit fan into flame the gifts that are being given to us. And so he says, if you if you love me, you will keep my word, my commandments. That's the first expression. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I do this, I do that, I do that. He says, keep my commandments. There is something about keeping the commandments of God. Keeping the commandments of God is not something we just want to do for Jesus or to do to please. No. When we, it's life. You know, it's a way of life that choose this way of life I have presented to you. And so when we choose this way of life he has presented to us, you know, we, have, we begin to be conditioned. We begin to be shaped 
will begin to be, you know, a kind of a, a set within our spirit. With our faculties begin to align, you know, align themselves for God to blossom. Because when we are fed in that way, we do better. So when we keep the word of God, we are shaped. When we keep the word of God, we are in position for the Holy Spirit to what? To help us thrive. That's very important. Because a lot of people will always wonder, ah, we are asking for the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit, that. that's not it. In doing the will of God, we are worshiping God, we are honoring God, giving God prominence, and something mysteriously is taking place. We are being shaped. That is where understanding comes. We begin to understand things differently. That is where joy in the Lord comes. Not from anything outside. That is where we begin to hear his sound in our lives. That is where we begin to feel, experience his footprints, you know, in our life. We begin to see clearly because it's a situation any other thing can see. And that is why he says the world cannot receive it because the world is not prepared. In serving Christ, in loving Christ, we are at the same time prepared. That is, we are at the same time made ready. And so we know. So the world is not doing that. And so if the world is not doing that, that Jesus rightly says that, I'll, I'll, uh, that I will ask my father if you keep my commandments, and he will give you another advocate. Advocate. He will give you the one who will stand for you. The one who will defend you. The one who will plead your cause for you. The one whose presence will always be there to advance the cause of your life. His work is perpetually to put to ensure that nothing works against you. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Because if anything, yes, maybe physical factors may be against us, but our spirit will still be strong. Our spirit will still be confident. Our spirit will still be strengthened. Our conscience will never be damped. And so when there is strength from within, you are victorious. Because outside, things can change. But within, as long as a person is firm, as long as a person is balanced, as, a long, as, as long as the battle is won in from within, you cannot be a victim. Yes, for example, Jesus was on the cross. Was he a victim? No. Even there, he was victorious. That is why we have Christianity. That is what we are celebrating. That is why we are Easter. Because he says that I did not turn my face from those who spat, those who pulled at my beard, those who struck at my back, those who flogged me and did all kinds of things, those who wanted me to be humiliated. He says, Yahweh came to my help and I was untouched by their insult. What does that mean? It means that already God has prepared me from within. What they want me to know that I am unworthy. They want me to know I am a criminal. They want me to know I'm a blasphemer. They want me to know I am a, a bad man and they want to associate me with the cross so that they will tarnish the image of this mission. And so, but I am not made from outside. I am made from within. That's why I say, Christ, God came to my help and I was untouched. Untouched simply means this is what is presented, but it cannot dampen or weaken or crush my spirit. That's many. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we need him. In fact, the Holy Spirit is just... The, he communicates that beauty. He makes life beautiful because we experience God in a different way. Where I say the world cannot 
receive the Spirit. And it's a pity. Say the Spirit of truth, the advocate, who will be with you always. He will never leave you. Always. In season, out of season. When things are fine, when things are not in shape. That is the spirit of truth. The spirit that endures. The spirit that is what it is. That's the nature of that spirit. To dwell with you always. To confirm you in the things of the Father. To support you and always see you through this mission. Say the world doesn't know the spirit. But you know because he remains in you. So, brothers and sisters, as you prepare for the Spirit of, you know, for the renewal of the Holy Spirit, the celebration of Pentecost, may we know if we don't welcome the Holy Spirit in our lives and cooperate with the Holy Spirit, we'll have kind of sterile faith. Yes, we don't need things outside or elsewhere. To give strength to faith? No. When the spirit is not there, what is of the spirit is spirit. What the, that's what the Bible says. And what is of the flesh is flesh. And this is a church that the Holy Spirit drives. And he does that in the heart of the faithful. May the good Lord give us the grace to... Cooperate with the Holy Spirit by loving Jesus and confirming him in our heart as the Lord and Master. The good Lord bless his word in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, born of the Father before all ages, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us may and for salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. And became For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Excuse me. Jesus told his disciples that he is with them and in his Father as well. Therefore, we can be assured that we have a direct way to bring our prayers before God. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church, that like the early disciples, we will boldly proclaim the Christ to others revealing the movement of the Holy Spirit through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in public office, that they may respond with assistance and compassion to the difficult situations and issues that confront them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have suffered as a result of the current pandemic, that God may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. 
let us pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. In a special way, we pray for our seminarian, Carlos Nogore, and our candidate-elect for the permanent diaconate, Alex Ochoa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our parish faith community, Our Lady of Fatima, and St. De- Mary's of the Desert Mission, that we may carry Christ in our hearts, willing to suffer for doing good in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who have gone before us and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, and those written in our book of intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayers. We also remember to look forward to this Mass and ask our prayers. We pray as we wait and prepare for the celebration of the Holy, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you strengthen our faith. We ask that you help us to make ready everything or every preparation we need to have that we may have this support and presence of the Holy Spirit whom we need and truly need so as to leave a Christian calling. We pray for those who hunger to know you, those who hunger to deepen their relationship with you, those who hunger to really allow you have your way so as to drive their faith along. And every other person who professes you, may every one of us experience the drive and the influence of the Holy Spirit in our souls. And so help us prepare, help us use this moment to get ready to put ourselves once again in shape so that that Holy Spirit we received at confirmation, that fire will be kindled once again through Christ our Lord. Amen. A question to you, as we have this bread to offer, walk of human hair, or just give it to become for us a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let's Take this. To me, share in his divinity. Blessed are you, Lord, the revelation to your openness. We have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, walk of human hand, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, accept it. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, 
so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty, of your mighty love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. To Let the us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty and a salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of both all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ a Passover has been sacrificed by the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamp of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that it may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save and savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as you look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray. Upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. With your spirit. Lamp of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. May the mercy of God, your blood, Lord Jesus, now bring us judgment and condemnation. Let me love your mercy be for us, protection of mind and body, and our healing remedy. Behold the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those caught to his supper. Lord, what did I show and tell of my roof? But only say, word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete 
to abide with you forever. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increasing us, we pray, with the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this seven food. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. This Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.